Hi everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, back again with another review. So, if you've got one of these, this being the Revell 132nd scale Hurricane Mark IIb, uh, their latest release in their fighter series, beautiful little kit. I've done a full build of this if you want to go back and have a look. This is completely out of the box other than I've added some PE seat belts and an antenna, you can see there. Um, other than that, it is out of the box. And uh, it is a lovely kit. The only issue I had, which many people have had with this, is the plastic seems reluctant to stick together with Tamiya Extra Thin, which is extremely unusual. But um, as you can see, it builds up into a beautiful model. And there we go. So if you've got one of these and you want to build it and you want to make it really nice, you might not want to use the decals. The decals in the kit are lovely, but you might not want to use them. You might want to get yourself one of these. And this is the latest release from Sven over at One Man Army. These things are absolutely brilliant. You've seen me review lots of them lately. You've seen me do a few tests. And indeed, um, after this video, I'm going to make another video and show you how I'm going to go about doing RAF roundels. So you've got all the multicolours and everything. More about that in a minute. So this is the brand new set. It's the latest one. It's reference 32DE2037. 037, one of my favourite rally cars. And if you've not seen these products before, basically this is a full mask set for the aircraft. So you don't have to use any of the decals. Sometimes you will find, like for instance, with the... Um, or oh, which one was it? It was the Hellcat in 124 scale from Airfix. You've got the, uh, the Japanese rising sun symbol on the side to show their sort of hits and everything. Um, it's just so fine. It's now impossible to make as a mask and to hold its shape and everything. So you have to use your decal in that one. But in very many cases, you don't have to use any of the decals at all. So what we've got in here is a set of masks that will do all of the stencils, all of the, the, um, the uh, letters and, and codes and, and everything. I can't think of the words I'm trying to think of, but you know what I mean. All the, um, all the data there is covered. And here are some general instructions on how to use them. I'll go through some general instructions with you in a minute as I do on every one of these videos. So basically in the set, we get the usual sort of large opening out sheet like so, that's showing us the location of the stencils. We've got no steps on the back of the wings. We've got um, the fuel fillers here, fuel 34.5 gallons, 34.5 gallons there, 14.5 uh, gallons in the nose. And then we've got oil going in here. We've got all sorts of stencils from the underside as well. And uh, make sure you check your references as to where the stencils go for your particular version. You may be wondering why use these and why not use decals? Well, th th there are quite a few reasons. One, when you use decals, to guarantee not getting any silver, or to help you not get any silvering, a lot of people like to use a clear coat. I certainly do. Some say you don't need to. I completely disagree. I think you always need a clear coat to guarantee no uh, silvering, and they always go down a lot better as well. So you at least need a nice flat surface. It needs to be flat and not undulating. And the thing is, if you look at matte paint under a microscope, it is basically matte because it has a load of surfaces. There's nothing to, it can't reflect because it's basically like this, like, like gravel. It's like a piece of sandpaper underneath a microscope. And that's why the deck will can't sort of get in and stick down. Whereas glass, gloss is like a sheet of glass. It's smooth. So there, there's no, nowhere of air, for air to get trapped underneath. So that's why. The other reason is the decals you've got may be in, inaccurate in size, they may be inaccurate in spelling. We've all seen that, haven't we? We've seen words painted backwards, we've seen words printed wrong. The colours may be wrong, so you may be building an early Lancaster and you want to use the grey markings underneath for the stencils, and you've only got the red ones in the instructions. The colours could be inaccurate in as they might be dark grey when they should be black, or vice versa. The colours on your roundels and everything might be incorrect. The other thing with decals, you can't really fade them back because invariably you will find underneath the colour there may well be a white base. So if you start sanding away the blue to remove the blue and weather the decal you may find you get down to a white base. Um, you've always got the carrier film around the edge which again needs another clear coat over the top so you're always adding these coats and when you've got very fine details you can actually start to lose your detail if you start adding coats. And then when you come to do your washes and stuff, all your panel lines and rivets are sort of soft and the pattern, the, the detail's kind of gone. Um, and of course, the other reason is, if you want that decals with a painted on look, what better way than to get your stencils down and paint them on? 
because painting them on is definitely going to give you a painted on look. So there you go. Um, so there's the, the, there's also other reasons as well, you know, weathering and getting not having to use clear coats and you can rub them down and you can weather them and you can fade them, you can bleach them, you can do all sorts, you can chip them and everything. So that's um, that's the reasons I think for doing it. So we've already looked at the back, we've already looked at the front. So let's have a look at some general instructions. So let's have a look at the masks first, actually. So in this set, it's very difficult to review masks because they're hardly very exciting, are they? But um, they do make or break a model, I think. So what we've got here, I'm going to try and show you in the light. If I can get the, 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 the light to reflect off the surface. You can see here we've got many spares. So we've got roundels here. So we've got um, three main wing upper roundels here. OK, and then we've got three here. And you can see these are framed. And as I said, I'm going to be doing a video on how I'm going to go about doing this. So here they are in a box section. So you can actually use the box, remove the centre, spray and leave the centre. Here you've actually got precisely the same size to fit in the box. So if you want to put that in, remove the centre and then replace the centre, you can use this one. As I say, I will be showing that. Here we've got the underwing roundels. So this is like the um, these under here. OK, so you've got those there. They're for the wing undersides, so your red, white and blue. Again, you've got them in a box here, and then you've got the three singles over here. Not sure if you're seeing them. There you go, you can see them now in the light. Um, here we've got the, the roundels for the sides, again in boxes, and here singularly. Here you can see we've got squares and diamonds, that's for your gun covers. Um, the only thing I would say about doing them is, in reality, they are like a sheet of linen that was put on with a resin or a dope and it was it to keep the ice out of the guns and then when they first fired the guns they would actually be holed through so if you want to use these um, you might want to put like a tatty edge around the side or something or put, perhaps put them over a piece of decal um, up, up to you the way you go on that one so you've got your registration codes here we've got the summer Samasthan's three there in a in a mask as you can see we got some stencils here you can see how beautiful they are they're absolutely gorgeous and then we've got um, serial numbers here we've got Z3745 and then we've got here Z3971 so this is for the day fighter sorry this is for the night fighter and then we've got on this sheet we've got some more underwing roundels We've got the BNV over here, and then we've got a load of um, a load of stencils there, and some more there. Now, people ask me the question, "What are stencils?" Right? It's a bit confusing because when you get decals, you actually get the lettering that would be made if you painted through this. So, in effect, this is a stencil. This is a mask you want to put on your model. And you're going to spray through it and when you remove it you will leave some lettering behind which has been given to you by the use of paint through a stencil but the thing is we still call them stencils so you're using a stencil to make a stencil Paul got a bit confused with that one on, on a review I did before so I'm just going to clarify that if you're getting confused the stencil is what you use to make a stencil it's like they might have you know on the side of the road they might have keep clear they might put a big sheet down and they just paint through it or they put that roller thing through it and then you remove it and you end up with the lettering the lettering on the road we don't call it a stencil but on an aircraft we do so that's where the confusion comes in here we have a square for doing the the uh, bands on the fin the fin flashes so what you're going to do here the best way to make this as a mask is you have the the actual square on the mask you can see it there what you do is you place that where you want it then you put masking tape around the outside of it and then you have here you have three fin flashes you can see there are three fin flashes and what I would do with them is you've got one here wherever you've got an X it's a spare is take take two of them out okay so take these two right ones out place them to the right side of that box and then remove this one so you're going to make that there Make that box there, put the box down, put the tape around the outside, spray it white. Then you're going to put two of these in for your spacing. Spray the front, the front there red and then take that one away and spray the back blue. Mask that up with some tape, spray the back blue. And then do the same on the other side. So you have to save one of these to keep it for your spacings. So uh, that's what I suggest there. And again, we've got more stencils here to go on the fuselage. Unfortunately, I didn't have these before I made the model, otherwise I would have used them. 
So general, this is if you, if you've seen all this before, you might want to just switch off. So general user notes, um, you'll hear me talk about weeding, you'll hear me talk about um, transfer tape. So basically what we're doing here, we have our main um, stencil there, our main mask there. If we just rip that off the sheet, obviously it's going to lose its shape, it's going to go all out of position. So what we do is we take the lettering out first, so we do what we call weeding. Okay, so what we would do here, in the case of this one, let's use this one here in the case of this one here we would take the S out of the mask okay so we get some tweezers and weed this out right now if I was going to use this I would use transfer tape because as you can see when you take it out it sort of loses its shape so I'm going to put that down over there if I can okay and then what we would do is get some transfer tape so in this case, I'm going to get a, is that going to be wide enough? No, I'm going to need a piece of wider masking tape. So I've got my frog tape here. You could use pretty much any masking tape as a, a transfer tape. It's, um, it's not critical to use any certain one. Okay, so I'm going to get that one there. Now, is that going to be too wide? Let's just have a look. Nope, that's perfect. So we're going to place that, you can see what I'm doing, I've got the S there, I'm going to place this over the mask, okay, just like so, and then rub it down on a hard surface, rub it down well, being a little bit careful up here, because where I've got that tape going onto there, I need to be careful that when I lift it, it doesn't take that one away with it. Okay, you need to make sure that the, 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 the transfer tape doesn't go onto another mask. Okay, the other thing I want to do is just get a little scrap of masking tape like this. I'm going to lift this transfer tape. Okay, on the bottom corner of the mask, I'm going to put a piece of masking tape underneath it, like so. Okay, what I've done there is put a piece of masking tape under the corner of the mask. So as you can see there, when I want to lift it off the model, it's easy to lift away. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here, press it down hard, okay, and I'm going to lift it up. Now I want to make sure that mask is going to come away with it. The whole thing is coming away with it, right? So I'm going to lift that away now, and as you can see now, the whole mask has come away with the transfer tape. So now I know I can put this down and it's not distorting, it's not all going out of shape, I'm not losing the form on that S, no problem at all. So now what I can come along and do is let me find something to put this on. Okay, so I've got my old Hellcat wing that we used for the, uh, for the A20. Um, so I can put this down now and I can position it exactly where I want to position it, in the corner of those rivets perhaps. Okay, and I can play with it, I can lift it. I would not recommend, um, if you go back and look at Zinzan's channel, he actually used this set or one of these sets on a Spitfire, a Qatari Spitfire, and he was putting the masks on his hand to remove the tackiness. I would not recommend that because you will likely to pull some something of the mask away. You could get a hair off the back of your head stuck underneath. I really wouldn't recommend it. These are designed not to peel the paint away, so don't worry about that. So we can put that down there now. Rub that down well, okay, and then when I lift the transfer tape, it should, no, it's not playing ball, there we go, it does from this corner. Ah, the reason it lifted there is because I've got that piece of masking tape under there, and it's sticky side to sticky side there. Okay, so now when I lift it, it will take the tape away, but it will leave the mask behind. Very carefully, very slowly, peel your transfer tape away, and now we have our mask ready to paint the S. And what you would do then is come along with other masking tape, use your old bits of transfer tape or whatever, mask off around and then spray the S. It's that simple. So um, that's the beauty and that's what using transfer tape is all about. So that's the first bit. Okay so now you've seen what I mean when I talk about transfer tape and, uh, and weeding. So we took the S out 
I put it all back in there. We took the S out, that was weeding, the transfer tape was transferring the mask onto the model. Um, and the little piece of tape in the bottom left hand corner is imperative. And you can see there that basically what we've got. The other thing to note here, if you can see there's a little black line on the top. And what the modeler has done there is where he wants the mask to go. So for example, if, um, if we were doing this hurricane, okay, and I wanted the center, the edge of that B to be here, what I would do, remember I haven't masked it yet, what I might do is put that tape along there, measure from the front of the, the fin, and then just put a little line on there, and then when I put my mask on, I can put the mask vertically in line with that, and I know that I'm in the right place. Just take the masking tape away, job done. So um, there we go. Um, same here again, using transfer tape to do an American star. So what we're doing is we're picking up the, the complete circle here, just like we would do with these roundels here. Okay, we're picking up the complete circle, placing it down, that way it holds it in a circle shape, remove the transfer tape, okay, spray that um, white, and then we're going to do the same with the star. And when you've got one man army masks, what you will find is if you overlay, if you overlay all of these together, they are exactly the same size, but you need to make sure you stick to the bottom left hand corner. So make a mark for the bottom left hand corner, put your piece of masking tape under there, whatever. Make sure you always keep them in the same orientation relative to each other. So we're putting that one down on top of there and then we're going to spray the blue or whatever it is we're going to do. So there we go. So that's that. Um, they say to leave, not leave them on for more than a day. Um, it says here after brushing for a couple of days, never leave masks on for more than one day. I would say, yeah, if you're going to leave them in the sunlight, you need to get them off. If it's, you know, if it's not hot summer like we've just had here in the UK, then you're going to be OK to leave them on there for quite a little while. Um, so you're going to be OK. So when it comes to painting them, I'll cover this in another video, but when it comes to actually painting the stencils, it's a good idea when you put them down, keep the paint dry. Don't ever flood the mask, because what will happen then is the paint will start creeping. And with stuff like this, where you've got this tiny, tiny little fine lettering, what you need to do is put the mask on, and then if you could imagine this is my airbrush, you will paint in from this angle, from this angle, from this angle, and from this angle. And that will make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies. But remember, always keep the paint dry don't let it puddle you want a nice thin mix so it gets in there but you also want it to stay dry so you're brushing it on very very lightly i've done it before in videos i will do it again many times i'm sure so um, that's the, that's one of the uh, main things and you, it says you use spare masks to practice on first spare masks are marked with an x so you can see here this one here this uh, fuel 14 gallons that's got an x there it's a spare there's an X there, that one's a spare. Um, we've got a spare here, Sam Aslan's. Um, now, with these roundels, you've got lots of spares, but he hasn't marked them with an X because you've got lots of spares, but none of them are really spares because you could use them all. Um, you don't have to just use these on the Hurricane. You might have a Spitfire you want to do as well. And if you don't use the spares, you've got enough. You've actually got enough here to go with. And as I say, I'm going to make another video, and I'm going to show you ways of actually doing these without using the square and I'm going to show you ways of doing them without using these so you could end up with six masks there for roundels so that's enough for three aircraft so um so there we go so that's basically the set um going over the page here we've got some more hints and tips this is what I said about putting the tape underneath um here we've got as I said about putting the line on put a dot on the center to make sure it ends up in the center this is a fantastic tip here what we've got here is along the draining edge of a wing, put a strip of tape down, mark off on the tape where you know walks are going to go or no steps or whatever or walkway here, whatever they are. And then when you put them down, they're all going to be in a straight line because you've got them buttoned up against the masking tape. So they're not going to be all like this and they're going to be equidistant as well. This is a big one here. If you need a mark to be um, on the other side, like on the other wing, if you need it to be in exactly the same position, what you do here, it doesn't matter that it's a triangular piece of tape, it's just a piece of tape. And as you can see here, what we've got here is a line there to show the seam line for that panel. We've got a line there to show the seam line for that panel. A line there for that seam line, a line there for that line. And then he's put a V over the no step on the end of that wing. 
then what you're going to do, you're going to turn the tape over, put a piece of tape across the back of it. So remember that here the sticky side is down, here the sticky side is up. So you've turned it over, you've lined up that line with the panel line there, you've lined up that line with the panel line there, that one there and that one there. You've got your V and you know then your mask is going to fit in here with the no step there. It's going to be in exactly the same position it is that one. So that's a brilliant little uh, tip there. So there we go. And as I say, um, if you're in the UK, these are available from Hannant's. And uh, I'm not sure if they've got this one in stock yet. It's, it's inevitable if they haven't. So it's going to be there soon. Inevitable is not the right word, is it? Uh, imminent is the word I'm looking for. Um, so uh, if they haven't got it, it will be there very, very soon. And I would say these things are a very, very good accessory to use on your model. As I say, if I'd had these when I built the model, I wouldn't have used them. Um, I finished my 24th scale Spitfire and I got sent the mask for the 24th scale Spitfire. I finished the Hurricane, I got the mask for the Hurricane. Um, I have got a TA-152 I'm building in the background off, I'm not doing any videos on it. Um, so I will have, I've got the mask to use on that one which I haven't even reviewed yet. And I have obviously got the A-20, I'm going to be using them on that. And I've got the Hellcat, I'm going to be using them on that as well. And of course, there's all the controversy about the one with the mouth and everything. Should that have been an F3, F5 or an F5, F6, F5 or an F6, F3? Um, so I'm probably going to use the other one with the stripy tail. But anyway, whatever, I'm going to be using one man army masks on that um, on that Hellcat. So uh, anyway, thank you for watching and I'll, I'll see you all soon. As I say, stay tuned. Look out for a video. It'll be called How to Use One Man Army Masks. And it'll be a dedicated video. And then... When these come in, I can just do a review of the sets and refer everyone back to that video. OK, so thank you for watching. Um, any questions, any suggestions, pop them down in the uh, comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you've liked what you've seen, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't liked what you've seen, give us a thumbs down. And, um, and hit the notification bell and you'll get notified when I produce new videos. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon, very soon. Bye for now.